Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Lawrence Training Academy. I am here again with my HDS 12 Live. Um, uh, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how to back up your waypoints and settings. And I'm going to actually explain it <clears throat> in kind of a little detail. Uh, there's a few things that's kind of a common uh, misconception with this. And so I want to go through and explain that. Uh, but to go ahead and get started, what we're going to do is just from whatever screen that you're on, all you do is press your pages button right here. And as long as you're running uh, the new software um, that Lawrence has out for it, you're going to click over here on storage. Now, let's say you have a, an older unit, like a, um, a Gen 3 or a, like a Gen 2 Touch, something like that. Instead of it saying storage, it's going to say files. And you actually have to grab it and drag it upwards to access that. But with the new software, like the 18.3 or the new 19.1, um, it'll just be listed as storage right here. So what you do is you just click storage. Now, uh, you need to make sure that it says a memory card right here at the top. Otherwise, it doesn't recognize your SD card. So very important it says that. But to do your waypoints first, what you do is see it says waypoints right here. We just click on it. Now it comes up. Now there's a couple things you can do. You can export all of them or you can export just by the region. Now the region thing is kind of cool because let's say you want to just back up or say you just want to share a specific lake with a buddy of yours, but not give them everything. Well, you can select that. Like say if I click export region, it takes me to a map and I have this little box here. What you can do is you can grab it and you can drag it out. I'll zoom on a little bit here and you can make it really as big as you need to. And then when you're done, you just hit export. And what it does, it's going to go through and it's going to save a specific file. Um, now we'll go ahead and just go follow through with that. Now you're going to see where it shows you have your uh, file version. Now I recommend choosing the latest version, which right now is version 6. Now you have all these other options here. Um, now if you're going to share it with, say, an older unit, you have uh, an older Elite or maybe even like an LMS or LCX legacy unit. With those, you have to save it under version 2. Um, but if you're going to just back it up for your own needs, um, for like, say you're just going to, in case you don't want to lose them for your unit or you're going to share them with another one, always choose the highest version because that's going to share the most amount of information, uh, tied to those waypoints, routes, and trails. Now, let's say for example, um, you're going to share it with another brand. Let's say, uh, Humminbird, Garmin, Raymarine. I recommend doing the GPX because that's a very common broad-based file type that basically all other brands can use. Uh, it's very bare bones. It's only going to save uh, the coordinates and the name, and that's it. No other information with it. No, like, uh, the type of icon, no depths, none of that type of stuff. But it's a good file to save. Like, I usually actually recommend saving it as version 6 and then going back and also saving a GPX file. Um, so let's, cause like, say if you ever run into an issue where you've got a lot of waypoints and routes on there. Um, so like <clears throat> there are a lot of times you may get like a corrupted file or anything like that that's in there and it may just be corrupted internally in the unit. Well, when you go to export that and then load them into somebody else's unit, you're going to get an error message that's going to come up like a, a waypoint parsing error or something like that. Well, you can go back and you can save it as a GPX and that'll kick out that error that you're running into and allow you to transfer them over. And so then once you do that, you can then export them back out and then you have a good file type that you can use. But for right now, we're going to just choose version six. So we select that and then we hit export. And then it's going to ask us where we want to save it to. And I recommend just saving it to one of your SD cards. Now, you don't need to click on it and drop it down and select a file. Just leave it on the main selection there at the top and then go over here and hit OK. Now it gives us the option to name it. So I'm going to leave it just as waypoints, routes and trails for now. And then I hit enter and then it saves it. Now you can go back in. We press our pages button. We then go to storage. And then now if I want to view it and make sure it's saved, I can click on my memory card. And now we see our waypoints, routes and trails dot USR file. So now it's ready to go. Now, if I wanted to import them back into the unit, so let's say I have them saved to a card and I just want to load them in my unit. Well, we just come to the screen right here. We select our memory card. And then what we do is we select the file and now it gives us the options right here to import, copy, rename, or delete. So you have to select import. All copy is going to do is just make a copy of that file 
onto your unit. It's not going to load the, the file itself into the unit so that the waypoints, routes, and trails are usable. It's just simply a copy of that file. So you have to select import, and it's going to ask if you want to do it. And I say yes, and then it tells us it's done. And it's as simple as that. Now, what we did on the last one was do it by region. So I'm going to show you how to do it just as a full uh, file. So we select just waypoints. Now, instead of the region, we hit export. Now, actually, before I go into that, you're going to see this option over here that says purge. Now, what that is, is you're going to notice is that it says deleted waypoints, and it shows how many I've deleted off the unit. Now, that doesn't mean that the waypoints are still in there and be pulled back off. Like I mentioned earlier, it's kind of a common misconception with this. A lot of people think that, oh, it shows that there's deleted waypoints, then I can go in and access them. No, that is absolutely not true. What this is for is for networking of waypoints. So let's say you have two units connected together, okay? Well, the way that the Ethernet workings with this is that when you have them connected together, you delete one waypoint off of the unit, it deletes it off of the other unit. And that's because, you know, like whenever with Etherneting, when you save a waypoint on here, it automatically shares it over to any other networked unit. But it's not just newly created ones, it's also existing waypoints. So because of that, if you were to delete a waypoint off of here, if it didn't delete it off of the other unit, what would happen is the unit would see that the waypoint's missing from here and automatically share it back over. And so it would basically be impossible to delete any waypoints off of your unit. So they add in this feature here so that, like I said, when you delete a waypoint, it deletes it off of anything else. Well, what you can do is if you don't want that to happen, you can actually turn off your other unit and then you can go in here and you can hit purge. And what it's going to do is it's going to remove any of the waypoints off of here so that whenever you uh, turn that other unit back on, it will in fact share the waypoints back onto this unit. Um, you know, it's like a little thing that they add in there. So, uh, you know, like it just make sure that you don't accidentally delete everything off of your other units. So let's say, for example, uh, you had an error um, on here and instead of deleting one waypoint, you accidentally deleted all of them. So to be safe, you can go in and hit purge so that it removes everything. So that way, when you turn your other unit on, it shares them all back onto this unit again. So that way you don't lose them all because it's very important that if you don't hit the purge, when you go and turn your other unit on, it's going to go and tell the other unit to delete its waypoints too. And so then you're going to end up with all of your waypoints deleted on all of your networked units. So uh, it's very important that you purge them if you don't want ever that to happen. But so anyways, let's go back. We hit export. And then again, we choose our file type. And I choose version 6. So I just hit export. And then I choose the where I want to save it. So I can just simply go down and I hit OK. Now, because there's already uh, a file saved on there for waypoints from that regional file we just did, it's going to give us the option to be able to create a new one or to basically overwrite the previous one. Well, what I want to do is I just want to do a new one. Now, again, it gives us the name on here, and it's going to kind of do them in sequence like it does with waypoints. So it's going to put a number two. If I saved it again, it's going to put a three. But I'm just going to press Enter. And you get the little hourglass, and now once that's done, uh, you're all ready to go. So you can close out of it. And now we see our waypoints, routes, and trails number two USR file. Now, a lot of times you'll see that it's just going to show up like this. So just go in, click on the little drop down, and then you can see it to make sure. I always recommend uh, verifying that it did in fact save it because there's nothing more frustrating than backing them up and then coming back later on and realizing that something happened and they didn't save and you've lost years worth of waypoints. So, um, you know, I always recommend backing them up. It's very important. I can't tell you how many different people I've talked to who have lost thousands upon thousands of waypoints and trails that they've accumulated over years all because they didn't back it up to an SD card. So, all right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to back up your settings. So on the same screen here, you can go down here and you click Settings Database. Now you're going to see it's going to give you the same type of menu as before. So we just choose the SD card. I hit OK. And then you can name it to whatever you want. Press Enter. Tells you it's done. Now we can go back in, check it, and you see Settings.set. It's really as simple as that. 
Now, if you want to load this back into the unit, what you do is you click on it. And now again, you're going to see the import copy. Copy just makes a copy of it, like I mentioned before. But what you do is when you click import, it's going to reboot your unit. So we click import. I say yes. Now as that loads, it's going to restart the unit and load it back up with the new imported settings. Now it's also important to know that if your unit is glitching out, say it's got a bunch of problems with it that are not just menu related because you screwed up and you selected something you shouldn't have. So it's actually really, there's a really internal problem with the unit. If you back up those settings and then do a hard reset on your unit to kick out that glitch, if you load that settings file back in, chances are it's going to load that glitch right back into the unit. So um, you kind of have to be a little weary uh, with that. So just be careful. Um, but so we just hit accept. Now it's going to ask us if we want to load the insert a card. I'm just going to say no. And that's it. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a really simple process to do. I mean, literally just press your pages button. You select storage and then you choose either your waypoints, or your settings. All right. Well, that's it for today, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please like it below and hit the subscribe button and the little bell. This will allow you to get notifications every time I release a new training video for your favorite Lorance product. Also, I wanted to give you guys some really exciting news. We will have our own very own website pretty soon, LorantzTrainingAcademy.com. It's going to have even more of your favorite in-depth, comprehensive training videos, so keep an eye out. Of course, I'll be sure to let you all know along the way when it will be up and running. And don't forget, when you watch videos from Lawrence Training Academy, the difference is night and day. Alright, I'll see you all next time.